to the twenty dollar super chat. We appreciate the love. He says, "You're right, Mike. My favorite Jay Z song is somehow, some way, off the Blueprint Two. That song to this day is still incredible. Look, man, a on, tree grows from Brooklyn. I love that record, man. Can I tell you something? I love somehow, some way, more than I love this can't be life. I do too." Because I think it's more inspirational. Like, it's no. hard to listen to this can't Seagull. be like Seagull. Seagull's mm -hmm. verse on there? Seagull crazy. Seagull's verse on there? How, how are they going to feed us? Yo. See? All right. See. This, is my, this is my belief. Those guys knocked it out of the park all three times that they collabed together. Yeah, three for three. I'm talking three about Jay, Scarface, and Beanie Seagull. And in my personal opinion, on all three songs, each one of them had the best verse each time. Guess who's back is Jay. Somehow, some way is Seagull. This can't be life is face. This can't be life is face. You, no, no, no. I, I, I'll give you that. No, I'll yeah. give you that. Yep. And they would have made such a great album together. I they would have. You want to know what it should have been? It should have just been a flat, like, 10 songs real yeah. quick, in and out. Boom, it would have been great. Bam. No talk, no pub, no nothing. Just get it done. They yeah. showed us versatility because... I mean, somehow, some way, and this can't be life or similar, but guess who's back is a banger. And honestly, let's who's keep it real. Banger, that's yay. With the help of Kanye West, that's they would have really been able to make a very diverse album that would have mm -hmm. banged, and he would have made sure that everybody was in pocket and doing what they do best. Man there with the Super Chat says, uh, y'all have, have none of Buster's first three. Uh, Murder Music, What the Album, Lord Finesse, The Awakening, Blackout. I love Blackout, but I, I can't put it there. Bun B, uh, Source Gave It Five Mics, Trill OG, and more. Uh, I do want to talk about Buster because that's another person that, you know, in, in kind of terms of album making that I know you're not super high on. Uh, DJ Bruce Almighty says, where would y'all rank Master P's Ghetto D? It's a good question, too. I just wrote Ghetto D and What the Album Down. Okay. What, would you, what do you think about There's a Dark Side, Mike? I'm a Muddy Waters guy. Is that on there? Of course it is. Muddy okay. Waters is right right up. Is what, Muddy Waters is right next to B, if I'm not mistaken. It's like 26, 27. Everybody's a Muddy Waters guy. Like, <laughs> right, right. right. Uh, I think I'm going to add that to my playlist this weekend again. Um just so I can get a refresher on it. That's what I mean. People do not understand when you're making a list of just 100 rap albums. That's why they did 200 and it took a panel of them. Do you know how hard it is? Oh, it's very difficult stuff. When you told me that you were doing 100, I was like, damn. All right. Cool. But I want to ask you about Busta Rhymes albums. Why? Okay. Because I personally feel like ELE is Busta Rhymes' best album. Um, I feel it's the coming. I, I, was, I figured you might have went there. Um, okay. But why, I think, why, I, know, think let's, I think let's have a quick debate about that. Why did two hundred? Huh? Do you think the Cummins or ELE is a top one hundred rap album? I'll I think so. You. Yeah, but see again, I might. I'm kind of biased when it comes to stuff like ELE and Blackout. They came in my primitive years. I had never heard somebody just spaz on a whole album like that, like Busta Rhymes did on ELE. And honestly, when we talk about chemistry and and sounding great together and bouncing off of each other. I never really heard anything in our era like Red Man and Method Man and what they did on that album either. So I might be a little bit biased to that. Now, as far as production-wise, I think Blackout, you know, it's not that great production-wise. Me personally, listening to both of them and their chemistry, I really didn't care about that. Blackout mm -hmm. was one of those albums that when you got in my car, I kept in the CD player and niggas wanted me to change it when I was playing it. You know what I mean? It was one of those. But ELE now. Man, Busta. Busta is a beast on that album, man. I'll say this, man. I don't think anybody would have gotten on that album in the zone that Busta was in and outrapped him on any song. Okay, so I, <clears throat> listen to what I'm about to say respectfully. Mm -hmm. And I've said this before. Well, give me some specific evidence, not the general evidence that you just provided me with. Yeah, I mean, I'm a little biased there. Uh, no, 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 but give me some specific things that make you say that about ELE. You get what I'm saying? Well, Everybody Rise. Okay. Um, and when he came in on um, um, 
what was the song after that? Um, na 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 na. Uh, I'm on live right now. Um, but you don't remember the name of the song, so that's. Well, no, it was one of those songs where you just spaz on, like you know what I'm saying. It's a uh, um, holy amazing grace about face total erase you niggas off the face of the place. But see again, I'm more of a bully foot rap fan when it comes to right. I like when niggas is just rapping, rapping. And I can but listen to that. Classic. No, that I'm with you on that. 100. Those are hard to argue that they're classic because it's not about the content being heavy. It's not about like, oh, okay, he hit this area and this, oh. or it's like, I feel this on this. It's just rapping, rapping at a real high level. Leroy so, Green had to help you. He said, Where We About to Take It was the song, Mike. Oh, yeah, yeah, that's the name of the song. I mean, you, you know, know when I don't want Leroy helping us, Mike. Don't let Leroy help you. <laughs> when I'm on live, this stuff happens. Um, it's Hold so on, many songs that I love. On Hold on, give me some more, Ellie. Mm hmm. That's the first single off of Ellie. Um, yeah, that's it the looks- first single, and do you got um not fired up, but um uh, what was the one they had the Mountain Dew commercial? Uh one more time, I right, hit y'all whatever uh, uh, Tear the roof off? Yeah, Tear the Roof off's on there. And I loved um because they did the double video with Tear the Roof off and they did um dun, 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 mm, mm, mm. Um, keeping it moving, keeping it wild, and keep the chatter stacking and piling. But now we happy and smiling because now we living good. Doing and the song with Janet's on there too. Wishing you could fuck around with me and my niggas. I'll be double the wild and double the bitches, double the figures. Yeah, I love that album. But again, it's hard for me to make an argument for it because again, it had the hits just like any other Busta Rhymes album. But see, the thing in hip hop, you kind of got to have substantive records in the album and it doesn't have that it had the record with um mystical which i love too but yeah i mean it's I'm hard to... the stuff, yeah i'm looking at the stuff on here and it's like all the dope stuff on here is the stuff that we heard play in the clubs and on the radio though and that's the problem with the album and that's usually a problem with buster's albums in general well the thing is all the stuff is dope but it's all in a similar vein it doesn't give you range musically it's just him on the album just spazzing. Very similar to Muddy Waters in that way. Uh, Nas the Goat says, what about Beanie Siegel, The Truth? Not top 100, but I love uh, What's Your Life Like. Um, Stop Chill. Remember Stop Chill? Stop. Mm-hmm. Chill. 007 says, honestly, The Big Bang was uh, super enjoyable by Buster. See, my thing about The Big Bang, and I think on a technical level, The Big Bang's a dope album. But it sounds more like Dre than it sounds like Busta to me. Mm, true. Now, I agree. And I think around the time when um, when Disaster Strikes, which is another dope album, and ELE came out, Busta found a whole new sound within himself. Now, the coming is rah, rah, Busta, and you're never going to get that rapper again. So the fact that you picked that album as your favorite Busta album, I get that. Uh, but... I personally think he's just a much better rapper on ELE. I, I get it, but it's like, well, Wuha is on the coming, mm-hmm. right? Everything remains raw. Yeah. It's a party by Jeanne. I could argue, man, that the Il singles. Vibe with Q-tip? Yeah, Il that's Vibe with Q-tip is on there, right? And Neil Vibe on there. Neil Vibe's on there. But we got another album with Everybody Rise, Tear the Roof Off. I love Give me some off. more. It party love over here. You got the song with Janet. I love the uh, last couple of songs on that. Um, um, what you want? The song with you Mystical. You want to know what, Mike? I'm actually going to come up off my opinion. You're right. ELE is better than The Coming. Like when you actually think about it and look at it song for song and the MC that he is, ELE is a better album than The Coming. It doesn't have it doesn't have the all factor of everything remains raw and woo-ha. And I think that's where it's some of it's from too. And yeah. also too, as somebody that was a fan of the whole like, you know, native tongues, it was nice to hear Q tip on all the rah rah joint on ill vibe. And I felt like when disaster strikes and ELE missed that. Now that granted. Vibe. Now granted, I'm not gonna sit here and trip like it's even that far apart, but the coming also had um 
flip mode versus death squad on it. The abandoned ship. And a ban- I was just about to say, I love abandoned ship. Mm-hmm. I love abandoned ship. I love I like the way Buster's rapping. The hook, the hook on alone it. is worth the price of admission. Yeah. Just his energy, yeah. Yeah. Jay Short with the super chat says, to be fair, Mike, the production on ELE was a 10. Hmm. Hmm. I think that. I would say this, you know, Busta developed this style. I mean, I won't say his style like he's a producer, but you know, like when you hear a certain beat, it's like, yo, that's a slick Rick beat. Mm-hmm. Around that ELE time, Busta developed this thing where it's like you hear a certain Calypso style beat, it's like, that's a Busta Rhymes beat. I think DJ Scratchator was making a lot of that stuff too, but he created an identity for other people to duplicate when they make stuff for him. You know what I mean? You know what? Like, hold on, Mike. We need to pull up when Disaster Strikes right quick. When Disaster Strikes got joints. Uh, we got somebody in the Super Chat saying, Dangerous. Put your hands where my right. eyes can see. Body Put your hands where my eyes can Fire see. Rhymes up. galore. Rhymes da- galore. galore is my galore. shit. <laughs> That's the shit. Yo, Rhymes galore is crazy. The fired up good. remix Ooh. with the uh, Night Rider beat when he started out the video. Yes. Rhymes galore. No. Rhymes galore. What's one the flip Erica mode Badu. song on there? No, Body Rock, mm-hmm. Dangerous, one with Erica Badu. Yep. Um, the We Could Take It Outside with We Jamal. Could Take It Outside. That's what I was thinking about. Yeah, that's we what, could what take it outside about. That's hard. what I was thinking about, too. I was like, hold on, where's that? Right there it is. Yeah, We Could I Take It know, Outside was hard. What? Very compelling arguments. You want to know what you can make? You can honestly say that you want to know what if you think when disaster strikes. I'm about to come up off my Buster list, Mike. You know what I mean? I think Buster's I think, first three are hitting, man, and it's think, it's uh, one of those things. It's kind of like you know, for lack of better comparison, it's kind of like Janet Control, Rhythm Nation, and Janet. It's like you could. Whoa. You know, I don't want to. You know what I mean? But as far as no, like, I don't know what you mean. But I let me finish. <laughs> No, I don't. You can have three different people. You can have three different people, and one person would say the Cummins, their favorite Buster album. Oh, okay. Another okay. would say Disaster Strikes, your favorite Buster album, and another one would say ELE. They're all so different, but they're all at that level. And I think he only fell off that level after ELE, to be honest. Like, Anarchy's not even in the conversation, Genesis okay. ain't in the conversation. He came back with the Big Bang Theory, but again, my thing with the Big Bang Theory is it don't sound like Busta Rhymes to me. It's a good album. J-Dub with the Super Chat says, Busta's one of the few that can rhyme over Dilla's. The shine was hard. There's a song that Dilla did on, uh, on Anarchy, too. Anarchy just came too quick, man. I think that was one of the missteps. And we talk about Jigga's consistency in the 90s. Busta was coming out every year, too. You want to know what? I think Anarchy was too much of a switch too fast. Because when I'm looking back at these albums, part of the problem with them is that they happen so fast and he hits you so hard. Yep. Hits you with so much that you maybe got a little busted out by the time Anarchy came along too. Because his personality is really, really big. And he I didn't take any breaks. Anarchy's first single, that Get Out of Here, where he tried to kind of do what Jigga did with the um, Annie Hard Knock Life. I think that was the first time Busta had a weak first single, and it threw everything off. When Disaster Strikes? I think I might like When Disaster Strikes better than ELE, even, Mike. You might. And that's it. not a crazy thought. Put your hands where my eyes can see. He flipped it. Oh, he killed the game with that one. I mean, that's still that's I mean, his biggest me, that's song. Still his, yeah. That's still his seminal moment, wouldn't you say? Yeah. I think it's Isn't possibly the greatest hip hop video of all time. Huh? I think it's possibly the greatest hip hop video of all time. Yes. Yeah. No, no, no. I agree with you. No, no, no. I agree with you. It's the best rap video ever. Uh, Ryan Gillum with the super chat says, uh, "What would you guys say to Busta's uh, most well produced album? What is his most well produced album?" Mm. I think now, now if you wanted to say ELE on that, because I, I think what it is is that I love the beats on ELE more. I think him on when disaster huh. strikes. Yeah. Ah, uh, I don't know about that, guys. I, I might, might be leaning the more towards the. Better? I might be leaning more towards the coming when we talk about production. No, but no, again, no. see, I, I like see, those gritty go. beats like that because ain't no everything remains raw on ELE. But that's what I mean when I take everything remains raw and Wuha like out of the equation. You know. Yeah, Vince. Uh, appreciate that, Vincent Hughes with the super chat, twenty dollars super chat. He says, "Song of Salvation." Yeah. 
Sing the song of salvation. Cricket ass nigga need some realignment. Where all the firemen? <laughs> you went crazy on that album, man. I love that kind of shit where you could just press play and this dude is talking about beat you with a tree branch. No, nah, man, that's different Buster Rhymes. But again, that's more of a... Um, that's that bully foot rap you talking about? It is, man. He, I'm sorry, no one does that bully foot rap like Buster Rhymes in that era. You know, that was... Because he has no, the no, inflection no, Redman's behind him. right there with him. Him and Redman. It's him and Redman. Mm-hmm. Well, it's him know. and Redman throughout the 90s, actually. Like, literally from about 90 to 99, it's those two guys with that bully foot rap shit. Red's like, don't you know who I originated all that wild shit, that wild, wild shit? I mean, it is what it is. Red, That was Red Man's style, and Red Man was the guy that ushered that into the game. I mean, but but that's what I'm saying. Buster was with L-O-N-S, like, like around the same time. He was, like, right there with it. So, you know, comparable times. You know what I'm saying? DeCarlo says, y'all like that but don't like Eminem. Well, Buster Rhymes is just a better rapper than Eminem. Overall, yes. Where's Eminem's uh, scenario moment? He got one of those? Okay. Or does Eminem have a put your hands where my eyes can see? Now, we're not going to do this to Buster. You know what I'm saying? Like, does Eminem really have a woo Does he have a um, everything remains raw? Does he have a, a, a record like the record with Buster and Janet? You got one of those? <laughs> I'm just saying, man. I hear nothing but air in the back now. Like, you know, is that like a, a stack of hay leaves? Hay leaves. I mean, I'm just saying, man. Yeah, I mean, I hate having that M with Buster conversation. Somebody said M got renegade. No. Jay Z has renegade. We got to stop doing that. When we, the fact that y'all have to bring out "Bitch Please" too and renegade whenever we're talking about Eminem shows you how weak his catalog is. The first thing that you come with is his collaborations with some of the greats. Come on, man. Eminem got no bangers. How many? Listen, we want to talk about hit records on hip hop radio at that time. Does he have any of those? He got Stan. Okay. If that's what y'all want to go on, man. Really, man, we're going to sit here and say, you know what? I'm riding the Stan. I think Truist made the first comment in his life that I ever agree with, and that's, I miss hearing Lord Have Mercy on Busta songs. Me too. I love Lord, Lord Have, have Mercy's mercy voice. I think that that was the cool thing about Flip Mode, too. And, you know, I've always talked about hip hop, great hip hop groups have vocal dynamics. And that you could tell that's what Buster was going for with Flip Mode. Everybody had their own distinctive voice, sound, and flow. Rod Digger was a standout with that. Lloyd Had Mercy's voice was incredible. Even when Rock Marciano came on Flip Mode, dope voice. Uh, I thought that Split Star's rap voice was dope. And they Rampage, no Rampage had a dope voice. I don't know about that. He had the. You know what it was is that. You couldn't tell how dope his voice was because everybody around him had such awesome voices. Bo Buster's voice is crazy, man. Like, I mean, as far as voices go, they're the best click ever as far as voices you go. You think so? Their voices, their voices were like enchanting. It's like, even if you didn't love the beat, it's like, yeah, but I just want to hear them rap a little bit longer. Man, yeah. when Buster came in on uh, Wow for the Night, that hook, oh. that shit is, nobody could song. do that. Like, how about this? Like, he, like, without him on that hook, that's not like a great rap song. As, as great as that beat is, and I love that beat. That was one of those songs that you heard on I Late Night, it, and the album never really is. came out back then. I think they ended up releasing it some other time. But Who did that beat? <sighs> Who did I want to say tonight? Buck Wild off the top. Somebody in the chat let us know. I, I feel, like, I feel like that could be Buck Wild. Uh, 007 the Super Chat says, Eminem versus Busta Rhymes in a versus... Uh, kills Eminem's legacy. That's why it'll never happen. They don't want him to match up with Busta Rhymes like that. And honestly, man, if we talking about... They talking about Busta needing the verses, he'll kill anybody in the verses. Okay, well, if Eminem's in the GOAT conversation, this should be an open, open and shut case, right? They're both aftermath to a certain degree. Why don't you just line them up? They don't want to do that. Because Eminem's going to get slaughtered by Busta Rhymes if he goes to Busta Rhymes in the verses. Buster would have to take it easy on him, to be honest. 
Uh, man there with the super chat says, Mike, please no Eminem talk. Uh, show is going great <laughs> without it. Yeah, you're right. It'll start going south.